hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel subscribe like and share your thoughts on what you think about this video so today we embark on a fascinating exploration into the origins of palm coloredness and the complex interplay of science history and identity now in a thought-provoking presentation a palm color woman talks about the latest scientific findings and her own theories to unravel the mystery of where palm color people came from where did palm color people come from? Now, with the candid examination of the Human Genome Project and the surprising revelations it unearthed, she sheds light on the evolution of palm color phenotype and its implications for our understanding of race and superiority. So join me as she talks about a lot of things in this video, challenging preconceived notions and uncovering the untold stories that shape our world. Check out this video. I will be right back. If you're a self-observant person, you have to ask yourself, where the hell did we come from? I mean, there's some real fundamental differences between people and any brown people on the planet. So I'm going to give you the latest science and some of my own strange theories on where did we come from? The first thing science tried to say was, oh, well, they evolved lighter skin to better absorb vitamin D from the sun. Especially in colder climates. That's why they got smaller noses and whatnot. But then smart scientists were like, what about everybody indigenous to that near area has brown skin, monolids, and wide noses. They're perfect for it. So that theory went straight out the window. So where did these super pasties come from? Well, that was about to be answered when they started the Human Genome Project. So more or less when this was done, uh, we... uh had a good clue as to where the hell people came from. And basically, this is what the DNA said about mm, books. So basically, this phenotype uh, that had evolved from the original Africans, when they crossed cases, they ran into these guys, Neanderthals. You heard me correctly. And some of them hooked up. Apparently, this is Shakira as a Neanderthal. Actually, enormous amounts of them hooked up. Massive. And created hybrids. Homo sapien Neanderthal hybrids. And this is where it gets interesting. We're not at people yet, almost. But none of your hybrids aren't fertile. Not so fast. Females of hybrids are. Males are sterile. But in general, the females remain fertile. So after this discovery, and only after this discovery... We had to go find about more about uh, Neanderthals because uh, we had left them as cavemen, and you know I wasn't having that. So we picked up studying Neanderthals again. So therefore, we found investors to fund studies, and we found all, all hundreds of Neanderthal sites and bones all over Europe. And that's when we started finding out things that play into some of the weird differences between uh, and all other people of color. For instance, Neanderthals were the first artists. Literally drawing and making paintings before Homo sapiens existed. We also found that they made jewelry and instruments before Homo sapiens existed. I personally think this explains the vast racial difference in fine arts and uh, classical music. Also, the first to bury their dead, again, before Homo sapiens existed, even possibly with flowers. But don't worry, it ain't all kittens and rainbows. Now, here is where uh, my theories are going to come into play. And it's probably going to be proven in the future. So we now know that the Neanderthals are what gave us a big push towards symbolic thought. thought. And so you're thinking, you know, that's great, right? Not always. There are two main problems responsible for mass killings that come from symbolic thought. And they both come from this. And this. Stay with me now. I'm not painting all Christians or all Muslims. But we're in, enslaved in the name of. In the name of comes from these religions, these mass religions, which come from symbolic thought, which was boosted in the population by Neanderthal. And I truly believe this is why I want to conquer and own everybody. So, Nanya, why don't Neanderthals still exist today? And why isn't our percentage higher? Well, not all interbreeding and hybridization leads to good things.
See, Homo sapiens uh, are of a higher intelligence and could adapt to different environments quicker. And so they continue to progress in evolution. And in the, in the Neanderthals, did, I can't talk. Neanderthals couldn't. So basically, our hybridization absorbed them into the human race. And once they were absorbed, then the hybrids are breeding back to regular humans and breeding to each other. And after, you know, 100 50,000 years, that draws the percentage down because there was a set amount of Neanderthal DNA. So that's why present-day DNA is so low. Anyway, that's why people are different, not superior. Now, the exploration of the origins of palm coloredness is a complex and often contentious topic that takes us into the intersection of genetics, anthropology, and historical narratives. In this video, the speaker confronts the fundamental question, where did palm color people come from? Now, through a combination of scientific findings and her personal theories, she seeks to unravel the mystery surrounding the emergence of palm color phenotype and its implications for our understanding of race and human evolution. One of the prevailing theories regarding the evolution of lighter skin among some human populations is the need to better absorb vitamin D from sunlight, particularly in regions with limited exposure to sunlight. However, as the speaker points out, this explanation falls short when considering indigenous populations living in similar environments with darker skin tones. This discrepancy challenges simplistic narratives and underscores the need for a more nuanced understanding of human genetic diversity. Now, the the speaker then introduces the groundbreaking research of the Human Genome Project, which provided unprecedented insights into the genetic origins of modern humans. The project revealed that a significant portion of the global population, including those classified as palm color, carries traces of Neanderthal DNA. Now, this revelation suggests that early humans interbred with Neanderthals as they migrated out of Africa, leading to the emergence of hybrid populations with varying physical characteristics. The discovery of Neanderthal ancestry among modern humans challenges traditional notions of racial purity and superiority. Now, it highlights the interconnectedness of human populations and the fluidity of genetic inheritance over time. Moreover, it raises important questions about the social construction of race and the historical context that have shaped perceptions of racial identity. The speaker's exploration of these scientific findings is complemented by her examination of the cultural and historical factors that have contributed to the perpetuation of palm coloredness as a marker of superiority and dominance. From colonialism to imperialism, the legacy of WS has shaped global power dynamics and perpetuated systems of oppression based on race. The video offers a thought-provoking analysis of the origins of palm coloredness and its implications for our understanding of race, identity, and human history. Now, the Human Genome Project's findings regarding Neanderthal DNA in modern humans highlight the complexity of human evolution and the interconnectedness of different populations. While early humans interbred with Neanderthals, resulting in the transmission of genetic traits, it's essential to recognize that these interactions occurred within a broader context of migration, adaptation, and cultural exchange. The concept of race as a social construct underscores the fluidity and subjectivity of racial categories. Historically, the classification of individuals into discrete racial groups has been used to justify systems of oppression, colonization, and exploitation. However, as scientific research continues to reveal the genetic diversity and complexity of human populations, the notion of race as a biological reality becomes increasingly untenable. Moreover, the perpetuation of palm coloredness as a mark of superiority has had far-reaching consequences for marginalized communities worldwide. From the transatlantic slave trade to the era of European colonialism, the ideology of WS has been used to justify the subjugation and humanization of non-palm color populations. This legacy continues to manifest in contemporary issues such as systemic artism, economic inequality, and cultural imperialism. Now, by engaging with the speaker's analysis and expanding upon it, Viewers are encouraged to critically examine the ways in which race intersects with power, privilege, and social justice. It prompts us to interrogate the narratives that have shaped our understanding of race and to work towards dismantling systems of oppression that perpetuate inequality and 
injustice. Now, racialization refers to the process by which individuals or groups are categorized and assigned distinct racial identities based on perceived physical or cultural characteristics. This process is not inherent or fixed, but rather socially constructed and subject to historical, cultural, and political factors. The invasion of palm coloredness as a distinct racial category can be traced back to the colonial era, where Europeans sought to justify their dominance over indigenous populations through the construction of racial hierarchies. By portraying themselves as superior and civilized, while depicting non-palm color peoples as inferior and uncivilized, Europeans perpetuated systems of oppression and exploitation that continue to reverberate today. The legacy of colonialism and the imperialism has had profound effects on global patterns of migration and diaspora. The forced displacement of millions of Africans through the transatlantic slave trade, for example, resulted in the creation of diverse communities with complex racial identities and cultural heritages. Similarly, the colonization of Asia, the Americas, and the Oceania led to the mixing of different ethnic and racial groups, further complicating notions of racial purity and superiority. Now, in contemporary society, the concept of palm coloredness continues to uphold as a normative standard, reinforcing existing power structures and privileging those who conform to its ideals. This privileging of palm coloredness manifests in various forms, including institutionalized artism, economic disparities, and cultural hegemony. We have finally come to the end of the video. What do you, my viewers, have to say about this video? Share your thoughts on what you think. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.